Hello everybody and welcome back to my kitchen. It's my first video making a food video. I'm very excited about it and I want to welcome, welcome, welcome all you new subscribers, new watchers, and YouTubers. And what we're going to be making today is deviled eggs. And my tip for the day for everybody is when you're making a recipe, Make sure you look through your recipe and make sure you look through all your cabinets to make sure you have all the ingredi ingredients that you need. So today we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what ingredients we're gonna be using to make our traditional Southern deviled eggs. Now, if you are, you know, taking this to a event, taking it to a traditional uh, holiday, supper, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, uh, anything like that, Try to keep it in the traditional realm. And if you're making it for your family and your family likes things on the spicier side, you could skip and use instead of dill relish or sweet relish, that's simply up to you also. A lot of people I see use sweet relish, I prefer dill. Uh, but you can replace the relish with jalapenos. You can just throw some jalapenos in a chopper and chop them up and throw them in there instead of the relish. And if you like a real kick, you can throw some horseradish in it um, there's alternatives that you can do but i would keep those for your family and for yourself at home because you know when you're cooking for a group of people you never know what their prefer preferred uh taste is and it, especially if it's a traditional holiday family you got elderly people there and most elderly people aren't really hip on uh, spicy foods so what i'm going to be using here oh yes and i have started on the stove already my uh water i'm letting it boil right now while i'm talking to you so right now i'm going to tell you the ingredients i'm going to use for my deviled eggs first i'm going to have my eggs themselves and i'm using a baker dozen and if you're a beginner a baker's dozen is 13 eggs not 12. you always had an egg for a baker's dozen so that's what i have for my eggs and then i'm going to be using miracle whip Hellman's real mayonnaise and if you don't like Hellman's and you don't like Miracle Whip you can use any Miracle Whip you want to you can use best choice or you can use a upper echelon uh, Brand too. It really don't matter. I just use what I prefer best choice or work anything. I'm gonna be using sugar salt pepper Dill relish And mustard now People, I'm telling you, even if you don't like mustard, like on your hamburgers or whatever, that's okay. You're not going to taste it in your deviled eggs. It's not going to taste like mustard, but you have to use that as part of the recipe. So, all you mustard haters, get over yourself. I'm just joking. You do have to use it, though. So, uh, I got me a bowl for my filling for when I peel my deviled eggs and my water over there is getting warmer and I'm gonna let the water heat up and put all my ingredients right over here and I see the Halloween is right around the corner all you guys have big plans for Halloween and then Thanksgiving's coming up which made me think of the first dish I wanted to cook for the holidays is deviled eggs and not only is it good for the holidays like if you're having a carrion dinner it's really a quite an easy dish to make and can impress the people that you make it for if you make it right. And I'm going to tell you some things about cooking your eggs. I let my eggs come to room temperature, so that's going to take the cooking time that I normally used to cook at 20 minutes. We'll bring that down to 15 minutes and we'll hop on over to the stove and put these eggs in the boiling water. Okay, so the water has come to a raging boil and I've hopped on over to the stove. So what I want to tell you all about is this Copper Chef pan that I'm using. Oh, it's it's a great pan. It was one of my better investments in my uh, cooking sets because all you have to do, you don't have to worry about dropping your egg in there or splashing back. And if you're a beginner cook, I know how many times I've dropped an egg in there or I put an egg in there and it's cracked. And um, even though I can grab that and it's not going to be hot, 
I choose never to get into the habit of doing that just in case I'm using another pot that does not have that feature. And it's really just better to always be prepared because you never know. You know, I know what I can do with my pots at home, but if I'm at my mom's house or at my aunt's house or at my son's house and they don't have the pots I have, I always remember I just keep, a, keep it around and I keep it a... Keep it in my mind to always grab the pot with a doily. So I set that down. And now you see I have this basket here and I can just drop that right down into the um, water. And I'm gonna go set my timer for 15 minutes and I'm gonna, well, I, I'll set my timer. Alexa, set timer for 15 minutes. So we've got the alarm set now for 15 minutes. But I do want to show y'all is I got 13 eggs in that one, but I bought an 18 pack of uh, eggs. So what I have over here is a smaller pan. And this is how I did it back in the day before I had this copper chef pan is I would take my egg, put it into the ladle, and then I just take it and put it right in there. Just right in your ladle, right into your pan, fill it out. Because if you if you try to drop that into the pan, it will it will hit the bottom of the pan and it will crack your egg. And plus, you don't want a hot water splashing out and getting you. That never feels good. So and there we have that. Okay, so now I'm back at my, in front of the camera, the camera is in front of me. So while the water is boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing all the wet ingredients together. And since this is deviled eggs, all the ingredients are wet. <laughs> so what I have here is about, oh, I'm gonna say two tablespoons. I have never really ever uh, measured it. I always kind of go by eye, and I know I, I owe it to you guys to measure it, but if I did, I wouldn't turn out right. <laughs> I use uh, two tablespoons of Hellman's Roe mayonnaise, and then two, two of those. So it's one of these, the two of the Miracle Whips. And uh, when you're using Miracle Whip and that kind of stuff, normally when you're cooking, your kitchen is really hot, so I'm gonna make sure I pop these back into the refrigerator so they don't spoil. Okay, so we have our mayonnaise. And one thing I wanna remind you guys about is after we done shell the eggs and get the, um, the wet batter together, we're gonna add the wet batter little by little because you can always add more but you cannot take it back and nobody wants a runny deviled egg nothing worse than have a deviled egg run down your uh, shirt at thanksgiving <laughs> so this is how i do the salt i'll put it in the palm of my hand and then i'll take it and i'll use about two no, let's use it all. It is going to be a lot of eggs, so we'll go ahead and I would say that was probably a one tablespoon or a half a half a table teaspoon, half a teaspoon, not a half a tablespoon. <laughs> That'd be some salty. <laughs> Wouldn't have to worry about anyone coming to your house for dinner after that. But anyway, I'm going to use some pepper. You don't use a lot of pepper. You said you don't use a lot, but remember, I'm making this for 18 eggs which actually is uh, 36 deviled eggs. And then we're gonna take this mustard, shake it up, shake your mustard up really good, make sure that you get it um, mixed up in, the, in your container because you don't want a bunch of water. You know how mustard can come out watery if you don't shake it, so you don't want all the extra water. And it doesn't take much, I would say enough for two hot dogs. Maybe three, about three hot dogs worth of mustard if you eat hot dogs. And then I'm going to use this uh, relish, but I'm not going to use that spoon. I'm going to use me a teaspoon. And I'm going to 
try to push it up against the jar because I don't want all that extra uh, juices in there. So we're going to put one, two, two of those in there. And I'm just going to assume if you don't like relish and you don't like uh, mustard, you probably don't like double eggs. <laughs> so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to mix this up really good. Now I'm not going to put my sugar in yet. I'm going to make sure this is nice and mixed really good. And so it is. And now I'm going to put a little bit of sugar in there. Now, sugar is one of those ingredients that is a dry ingredient, but when it gets wet, it becomes a liquid. So just remember that when you're cooking with sugar and say you're making a cake, and you've always, or maybe you've wondered why is sugar in with the wet ingredients? That's why, because when sugar becomes wet, it becomes a liquid instead of a solid. So I'm going to go back to my teaspoon. I'm going to say, I'm going to use about two teaspoons of sugar in this. Let's use three. <laughs> I'm in a sweet mood tonight. So then I'm going to mix this up really, really, really well. And yeah, uh, see, I can already tell by the by the texture that it's looking good. Because you don't want it too runny, and you don't want it too thick. You want it about the the thickness of thick oatmeal. That's what I would compare it to, lumpy oatmeal. So if your batter is about the consistency of lumpy oatmeal, then we're doing great. Because once we add that. Um, the yellows from our boiled eggs that'll thicken up really quickly so right now we're gonna wait for the eggs to get done and I'll be right back okay everybody so my eggs I've turned my eggs off and they're coming down to the cooling down process but I just want to show you something real quick if you don't have the the, um, the strainer that I do that I cook my eggs in you can always use one like this this is one more for sifting flour, but you know what? It drains water just as good also. <laughs> you can use the old time colander style, the stainless steel. It works great also. Anything that's a strainer, you know, whatever you have, plastic, silver, don't matter. So this is my choice. And the reason why I choose this one is because when I was younger and you're not thinking, I don't know, or I wasn't thinking about it, but sometimes when I would rinse or um, drain things into the sink and then you would rinse your stuff, you put your colander down in the sink and then you dump your stuff in there, but you're not thinking about the debris or the bacteria that's down in the, down in your sink. So I like this one here because you can just pop it open put it here on your sink like that I'm gonna get these eggs here I'm gonna strength dump them in here and when you're dumping never dump towards you I know that seems like it would be awkward to do but when you're dumping always tilt it towards the wall or towards the sink away from you Okay, so there's a lot of different techniques and ways people talk about how they pill their eggs. But I pill mine maybe a little bit different than everybody else. So I'm going to take these and I'm setting them in cold water, lukewarm water. It's not cold, it's not hot. The eggs are very hot though, I'm touching them. Ouch. So then I do that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab this over here and put my handle back on. Now, these probably did cook just a little bit longer than I wanted them to, so I'm going to hurry up and get them in the water. And I'm just going to set this in the, in the water that I have. Now I'm going to spray them down with cold water just so I can um, get them to the point where I can touch them.
Now, if it's like, say you were doing Thanksgiving dinner or something, no, this is another tip I want to give you with deviled eggs. Deviled eggs isn't something I would cook the day before the event because they have a tendency to get wet and soggy. And I love deviled eggs, but I do not like a soggy deviled egg. So if you're going to cook them, make sure you cook them the day of the event. Don't leave them in your refrigerator overnight. It will turn icky. But if I'm just... If this was Thanksgiving Day, and the next thing I would be cooking would probably be potatoes for mashed potatoes. And since I have all this water and it's already boiling, I would uh, just put my potatoes in that water and go ahead and start boiling and cooking them also. So now I'm going to go over here to the sink. I have, I'm going to turn on a little bit of cold water. I'm going to put me, well, actually, I'm going to turn the hot water on. Where it's just enough, where it's not hot and it's not cold. Lukewarm, not cold, not hot. Because the eggs are very hot still. So I'm gonna run my egg under the water so it can be, so I can hold it. And I'm gonna hit it like that. It should crack open. And you just start shelling it like that. And look at that. See how that uh, shell just falls off there, why that's nice and hot. I found that if I let the egg cool down too much, it just, uh, it doesn't want to, do, the shell doesn't want to come off near as easy. So I'm going to set that over there. I'm going to show you one more time. Take the egg. Now this water is just lukewarm. Like I said, not hot, not cold. More on, more on the warm side though than the cold. Us cooks have to suffer. Our children don't know what we go through with burned fingers. But you see how that that uh, egg is peeling just nice and beautifully. Because you want your eggs to be able to cut down the middle. You don't want to have your egg looking like a chainsaw massacre came in there and picked away at your egg. So I'm going to go ahead and finish... Uh, um, shelling the eggs and I'll be right back okay everybody so we've shelled our eggs and we have all these nice eggshells here and I just want to tell you a little tip if you're in the gardening and flowering you can take these eggshells you can crunch them up and you can put them into your plants and it'll be great nutrition for them so I'm just gonna set it back over here for now because I have a lot of house plants and I will be using those for that so now I'm gonna take my eggs I want to show you guys see how nice and yellow that is that's the exact color you're looking for you don't want no greenness around the edges and if the whole egg, the whole egg is green you might as well just throw it out and start over with a new batch so go ahead and start cutting these open you just go down lightly I'm using a sharp knife, but you could use a butter knife uh, if you don't trust yourself. And if you're a beginner to cooking, I would uh, suggest using a butter knife, honestly. I've been doing this for a lot of years, though. So what we're going to do is just take this out because it's perfectly cooked. It just falls right out of there. You don't even have to do anything. I'm just going to show you. Normally, though, maybe if they were sticking, I would just take the spoon. Get with a spoon and out like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut these so I can get them cut, make the process go a little bit quicker. Now, see how I did that one there? That was the oopsie. This one's a lot thicker on this side, and this one is uh, thinner on this side. So, I'm going to put this to the side and I will eat it later. I'm down to the last two eggs, but I wanted to show you all another tip when cutting them. See how your knife can pick up that yellow, and that doesn't matter what kind of knife you're uh, cutting with. It doesn't matter if it's a butter knife, a Ginzu, the copper knife that I'm using right now. But after you're done, uh, after you're done with almost each and every egg, you have to wipe your bowl down with it because uh, it'll get your eggs ugly looking. It'll stick to the see how it stick to that. Just do that, and then it'll cut right through. But if you have that white or that yellow on your knife, it'll just See how it sticks right in there? And even if I had a butter knife, that would still stick to it. So I'm just gonna finish that right up right here. We're about done. The egg stuffing smells good. I enjoy that. 
And I'm not really a big egg eater, but I do enjoy a deviled egg. Probably because it doesn't taste anything like an egg no more. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is take my copper whipper mixer stir. <laughs> I forgot what you call them. But anyway, I'm going to mash them up like this. And you guys seen me earlier make this mix. So I'm going to... And don't use a beater. Just use a fork. If you don't have one of these, use a fork. You don't want to beat it till it's a uh, till it's a uh, real runny. You don't want that. You want a nice, solid, thick deviled egg. And see, I've been making this for so long, and so many times. I almost have this down to the exact. But you want to make sure you stir it really good because don't forget you put that sugar in there and you want to turn it into liquid because you don't want someone to bite into your deviled eggs and taste granulated salt or granulated sugar. Okay. So you see how that's sticking to my... Um... Oh my goodness, I can't believe I can't think of what this is called. Whip. See, it's a little bit too thick. <laughs> But that's why you uh, add more later. You don't want to make it too runny in the beginning. But I'm going to add a little bit more miracle. Wood. Probably about a half and a teaspoon. Teaspoon and a half. And I'm sorry if I uh, beat on that bowl and the microphone picks it up. It's just what I'm used to doing. But I am going to try to learn to correct that in the future. Now I'm going to take me one teaspoon of this. And that should, in theory, be perfect for uh, what I'm trying to create. You guys see that? See how nice and yellow that is? That's like the perfect yellow for a, a double day. It's not what I would call yellow. It's a, well, it is yellow, but it's more like a really light tempered yellow. Not that kind of yellow. This kind of yellow. <laughs> so I liquid it down. You see how that's a lot, uh, a lot thinner than it was. It may not seem like it, but okay. So now we're ready to do the stuffing part. I'll put that right there in the bowl. Now I have a deviled egg container holder. Like if I'm traveling or something, I will use that. But since uh, I couldn't find it, I'm just going to use my copper plate to, or my copper uh, tin pan right now, and I'm going to start stuffing these. I'm going to go ahead and get me a clean spoon. And I've seen, you know, gourmet chefs or what upper crust chefs use uh, decorative bags and all that kind of stuff that's just not necessary <laughs> unless you want, are showing off for somebody other than that spoon works perfect so you want to take about a half a teaspoon i'm using regular grade eggs they weren't you know they said large but these were not large eggs these were just mediocre medium eggs in my opinion so a half a a full teaspoon or a full teaspoon on the end of your spoon and you take it you put it in there and you just take it like that don't try to overstuff you know if somebody wants more deviled eggs i can take another deviled egg you don't want to stuff your uh, eggs too much because you you know you don't want egg falling over you or you don't want egg falling onto your outfit especially if it's the holidays and you're uh, it's, early in the day and you ate now you have to carry around deviled egg all over you not that your family cares but you might <laughs> so i'm going to go ahead and uh, finish putting the stuffing in all these and i'll be back and show you how they turned out okay everybody so we've got the deviled egg stuffed right there they are looking gorgeous and tasting delicious i've had a couple already so another thing I want to tell you is that I know a lot of people like to use paprika on their deviled eggs, but I like to leave it on the side or on the counter for people who do like it. And then they can just personally 
put their own um, personal amount of paprika on their egg. I mean, it does make them pretty, but I'm not, I'm not really a, a, a cheerleader for paprika either. I just don't care for the taste of it. So another thing I want to say is while I was going through my, uh, my uh, silver strainers that I had, I also, I figured you guys would say, well, you have all that copper, but you don't have a copper strainer. Absolutely, I do. I just don't use it. <laughs> so another thing I want to add is that when you're done with your deviled eggs, you'll have leftover. And this right here, you just take it, take it all out of the bowl. And what you have here right there is an egg salad sandwich. You put it on two pieces of bread, take it to lunch tomorrow, eat it tonight if you want to, or whatever part of the day you want to eat it. And if you were, just in case you never make it back to my channel, I want to give you a tip about a potato salad. So if I was making potato salad, the only thing I really would have to do to turn this into potato salad, and that would be simply, honestly, you could use this and just put your potatoes in it, and that would be potato salad. But a lot of people like uh, texture in their potato salad, so they'll put onions in it, and a lot of people like celery in their potato salad. I'm not a fan of either one of those either in my potato salad. I just, uh, this is what I use for my potato salad mix and maybe I'll use a little bit of garlic salt and garlic salt and a little bit of onion powder but besides that this is a potato salad uh, mixture too deviled eggs egg salad sandwiches potato salad it really is a multi-purpose uh, recipe and for beginner cooks it's great to have so I'm gonna let you go now have a great great uh, night day whatever time you're watching this and everybody don't forget to hit the subscribe button and if you like it push the like button and if you really enjoyed it help help me grow on my channel and share my video with other people and tell them about me and my name is willie and this is wmpt have a great life i'll cut that part <laughs> have a great life i'm willie